Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to take a look at converting a logo uh, into a toolpath and actually burning it with a laser. Uh, this, this process not only will work with a laser, it'll work with a CNC or basically anything else that uses G-code to drive it. What we're going to do is we're going to use Inkscape to start with and then we're going to move on to Cut2D and we're going to kind of talk about the workflow through this because this is really going to be more so of a workflow episode of, of why we're using certain programs to do certain things, etc. So with this, what we're going to do is we're first going to go open, and then we're going to pick our logo. Uh, as you can see, this is a pretty good size logo. Um, so uh, again, we're going to be kind of making a rather large one uh, on the uh, uh, laser. So we're going to go ahead and select it. And then one of the things as we go to open this up, we want to take a look here and see how we want it rendered. So basically we're going to just render it for image DPI. It's a good size file. We want to embed it. We don't want to link to it. And then we're going to click OK. <clears throat> so this is going to open up a new window. So I'm going to just, um, to, for room, I'm going to close this one. And I'm going to exit without. And then we're going to make this large and then let's uh, so we can see this a little bit better let's kind of zoom in um, uh, this always creates a little bit of a problem kind of a one-to-one -one. all right so there's our image it's actually a PNG file so the background has a is a clear alpha uh, which doesn't matter you can do this with a JPEG etc so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to select the whole thing um, and then the second piece we're going to to do is we're going to say trace bitmap so up here basically it's shift alt B so we're gonna click that and it's going to bring up this dialog box now this is what we're going to talk a little bit about this dialog box so um, there's a number of different ways and depending upon the image that you're using my suggestion is would be to experiment so my best luck has always been with the brightness steps, especially if it's a rather line arty type image as we have here. So this is what I'm going to click. So I'm going to and then basically what will happen is it will make eight passes to create the image. And so I'm going to click OK. Uh, this is a six core machine, so it does it rather fast. And so boom, here we are. You notice the change. So also one of the important things to notice notice the color is gone there was some red in the lines here this is going to be important uh, in a second so we're done with this box so we can dismiss it so we can just click the X to dismiss it and then we can move this now one of the things to notice notice we now have two so this this image here is our main image this this is our raster based image and you can see the red the colors the grays and everything so we actually want to delete this image so we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete this image just pressing the delete key what we're left with is actually now the um, the vector representation so one last uh, handy step here we're going to do is again we're going to select it when it say pass stroke to pass and paths and then we're done have a little bit of a cold here so apologies so now this this piece is done so now if we wanted to we could actually go into extensions generate G code and I've done a video on this before we can use the JTEX photonics tool to to create um, G code but now if you notice this this image is a little bit busy so now we can do a couple different things we could you know because if we create the G code it's going to cut it out just as it looks right here um, and that's not quite what I want because the the piece is, is it's got all these extraneous lines again for the look of the logo and if that's what you're going for you could just go this route um, we could also clean it up in here try taking these out because but this is all right now one big line and would have to break it apart and again you could do it if you wanted to spend the time so and again however what I'm going to show you in this workflow is how you can cheat a little bit save some time and pick out the pieces that you want so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to save as and then what we're going to do is go up here and we're going to pick 
EPS, Encapsulated Postscript. And then we're going to select that and then we're going to say save. And then basically we want in this, this piece to convert text to pass. So again, it's very important that we have it. And again, I'll just leave it set to uh, Postscript to level three. We click OK. And then um, basically it's going to save off our um, image and so it's going to save it uh, actually I'm going to I'm going to go back I'm going to do this again I'm going to say save copy as um, EPS and then uh, because you notice it saved it back to the original location where I loaded the PNG file from and actually I don't want to do that so I actually want to go up here because I've got a little place where I always put these and it just makes life so much easier and I have an EPS file and I'm going to click Save and then again back here same thing and say OK. <clears throat> All right, now we save that out. So let's go into Cut 2D. Let's create a new file. We're just going to, um, well, this one is uh, 100 by 100. We're just going to make it uh, 200 by 200. Uh, well, actually, we're going to make it 200 by 100. Notice my thickness here. This is very important. So my th thickness is 0.3. I have my laser set in my tooling is 0.3 so it basically makes one pass now a little tip here if you want it to make two pass make this 0.6 and then what will happen is it will make it two two passes around so if you have thicker material this is the way that you can actually cut through that thicker material uh, we're going to go at about 60 millimeters per minute uh, cut it's a two watt laser that we're using and for the 80 pound bond paper once is, is is more than enough however if you're going to do like corrugated or something this is the better way to go to have multiple pass and again on mine i'm not using any movement in the z axis uh it's just simply an, another round so we're just going to click ok we're going to select that and we have our blank image so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to back to file we're going to import and you see we have the logo here so uh, important to understand we can also import DXF EPS AI PDF which is important so we have a we have a bunch of formats that we can we can actually import now I like e EPS and PDF are pretty close to the same uh, you know one is uh, you know meant to be rendered in a postscript printer while basically a PDF renders on the screen sort of is is postscript I don't want to get into all the details just know that those two are very similar in nature and, however the EPS is the encapsulated postscript is likely going to contain more data so we're going to click open and boom our image is now in there so now we're going to have to zoom out a little bit um, to bring this down I should have probably made my my thing a little bit bigger but um, so we're gonna pull this down a little bit alright so it's on our paper and so we now have it down here and um, I want to see need to see material size so I'm going to bounce out material size to 300 there we go so we got we have this whole thing now fitting on on the material um, and again I'm going to select it and just kind of move it over to center now you notice when I selected it it selected all the vectors but again as I mentioned before I really don't want all the vectors selected um, because I don't want all these extraneous lines because if you think of it prints if it cuts all this out you know basically there's just gonna be a big hole in the middle of the paper because all these cuts intersecting you know for example you know like this box when it cuts it out it's just gonna fall out when this one so this is all just gonna be one big open piece and when you're working with the laser because you're actually in this case we're actually cutting it out we're going to make like a stencil out of this you have to kind of think through some of the various pieces so what I want to do is I want to collect I just want to 
select the pieces and this might be a little bit difficult to see on the screencast but I just click the inner side of the D and notice it's now highlighted this so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the shift key down and now I've selected the Y I've selected the the three I've now selected the other D now I've selected the T now I've selected the E and I've selected the O. Now the thing is with the O basically even though it leaves this inside this is going to fall through. What you could do is if you wanted to get particular you could probably pull this line or connect this line so it kind of holds it in and just basically cuts the pieces out but we're not going to worry about this for this demo. Um, we just want to just cut it out. So now I've selected the H, the period, and now the C the O and the M. All right, so basically now that's that's all selected. Now you notice I haven't the other lines are not selected like they were in Inkscape, and the reason for that is the the EPS file format broke those up into into their own paths. So that saved us the work of having to clean that up. So now let's go into the tool paths. We're just going to select a tool, laser. Now I'm going to hit edit just so you can see. So now, as, as I mentioned before, I have my depth set to 0.35. So it'll only do one pass. I'm going at a feed rate of 60, 60 millimeters per minute. And again, I know for this type of, of run, um, it's more than enough to cut through 80 pound paper. So I click OK. Uh, and then I'm going to go back here. I'm just going to rename this to being letters and then I'm going to tell it just one one last thing I've got it cutting on on the line I'm gonna tell it to calculate and there we go this is what it's gonna look like now notice the cutout of the uh, the O and the opening of the E so uh, what I want to do is I want to go back and then I'm going to just select the inside of this E also and then I'm going to just add a tool path and I'm going to call it cleanup. I could have added it to the other one, but it's easier just to do it this way to do a final then calculate. And then you can see my E's now cleaned up, but I still have this big hole here for com, um, which is something if I wanted to, I could clean up um, later. So anyways, it's uh, pretty much there. So now what we want to do, oh, I, oh, one of the other things we probably want to do is is cut a box out around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a box around it uh, because this is actually going. While I have it smaller here, it's going to be on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper at the end. So I'm going to put a box around it and uh, square size everything. Okay, so I'm just going to hit apply, create, and then I'll close this. So I go back and then now I'm going to select this uh, box and then I'm going to put uh, select cut and then I'm going to call this cut out and I'm going to make this my last cut. Whoops, cut out. I'm going to make this my last cut. I'm going to say calculate and there we go. So you can see on this material we're basically cutting out our logo without the lines. Whoops, just something I noticed. Uh, there's no eye over here. So I need to go back and I need to, to correct that so I had forgotten the eye. So I now selected the eye and I'm going to go back and again I'm just going to do another clean up. Um, I'm going to do clean up two and I'm going to hit calculate. Now one of the th problems I'm going to have here and uh, is, is I'm, my cutout is going to happen, then I'm going to do my cleanup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select cleanup, and I'm going to actually move that up. So basically it's going to cut the letters out. It's going to do the cleanup on the E. It's going to do the second cleanup on the I. Uh, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up further because that way the tool movement will be in the same plane. And it's a rapid. It won't take long. And then my cutout will be last. <coughs> Excuse me. So... Anyways, um, it's it's where we need it to be. So now we just need to go through and create the G code. So we have all of our tool paths here. So we have um, you know the four cuts. We've 
got the uh, Gerbil laser selected. We're going to do millimeters, millimeter, millimeters. Um, we have an NC extension, and so we just basically save this. And so we're going to go up and um, we can go to G code, and we're just going to say uh, again. We, as you can see, we've already done this uh, once or twice, and so we're going to do logo three, and we're going to save. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut over to the machine and show uh, cutting this out in time lapse, of course. Uh, 60, 60 millimeters a minute is not that fast, but it's a, actually pretty good. Uh, so we've done time lapse on the uh, with, with an Apple iPhone to get this. So hopefully this helped. Um, please click below uh, after you watch the video how it went through. Uh, hopefully this helped you. I'm going to do, be doing some more tutorials on both... Um, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Inkscape as well as Cut2D as well as uh, a number of workflows. One of the things that um, you'll probably see come out on the channel is, is a series on workflows both in Tinkercad, uh, 123D Design, um, uh, you know, uh, basically Cut Vetrix, uh, Cut2D. And, and again, I'm going to focus not really so much on tutorials, how to use the applications. There's a lot of tutorials out there. I encourage you to watch them. My focus is going to be what's the workflow? How do we use these applications together? How do we get to an end state um, product on the tool to create something? Uh, because that's where the real power is, is how we combine the various applications and tooling together to you know come up with a product. So uh, anyways, again, appreciate your time. Uh, again, please hit like below. Subscribe to the channel as there will be more.